good morning guys and welcome back to basic fundamentals for DCS world ka50 this will be course two where we go over the startup procedure for this beautiful bird we're gonna go ahead and jump in the cockpit and get right after it I know the last video was ridiculously long so I'm gonna try to keep this one as short and sweet as possible first we'll go over the startup then we'll talk about the HUD symbology while it's uh, in its uh, default mode and then we'll wrap up all right, so first, we're going to hit right control Charlie to close the canopy door. We're going to come over here to the right and bring up our batteries. We're going to make sure our inverter switch is set to the auto position. Then we can bring up our radio systems. Set the fuel quantity gauge to on. We're going to go ahead and come down to the back and engage our ECRAN system, the warning system. Come over here to the left side, disengage the caution. Set our INU switch up to on. It's going to fi find it here on the back panel. Then we'll come back to the left and bring up our ABRIS. You can set your lights as required, so we're getting ready to start the aircraft, so we'll go ahead and hit the uh, anti-collision light. Let people know that the aircraft's getting ready to fire up. Come to the left side and bring up the targeting system. Come to the right side here and flip our switch up for the fire extinguisher. Put the fire extinguisher switch to the forward position. Find our standby ADI indicator, or ADI, excuse me. It's this guy here. That's the power switch for that. Set our forward and aft fuel pumps. APU master switch for the fuel. And the left and forward, or left and right fuel shutoff valves. Okay. Then we'll come over to the left side and verify that our start switch is in the correct forward position, which is for the uh, uh, start. So here we have start, false, or false, gosh, backup. The start settings are start, crank, and false. You should always leave it in the start position. I can't imagine any other reason why you would need to. With it in the start position, we're going to take a look at our turbo gear switch here, and you can see that you have the turbo gear APU left and right engines. By default, it's in the APU position, so we'll go ahead and hit the start switch. Come here to the left, you can see the uh, APU ignition light. Should get one more on, this means the APU is firing up. Watch the uh, APU temperature should stabilize at about 600 degrees Celsius. While we're down here, we'll go ahead and disengage the rotor brake by pushing down on it, so you saw just one click. Come back over to the right side while the APU finishes starting, we'll go ahead and arm the ejection seat. You can set your weapons master switch on if you'd like. Now, this isn't proper protocol, but it saves you steps later. Come over here up to the top right, up top right of the right panel here and engage the electronic engine governors. Doing a quick sweep here, make sure we got everything. All right, looks good so far. APU is stabilized, so the next step here is we're going to move our throttle. Watch these green indicators here. You'll see the throttle go into the auto position. So we're going to keep pushing, and now we are in auto. Okay. With the throttles in the auto position, we're going to go ahead and left-click our turbo gear switch once. You can see that we've gone down to the left engine. We're going to hit our start switch here. Watching for 20% on the engine RPM gauge, about 18 to 19. You can uh, hit the fuel and, uh, cutoff switch and do fuel to the engine. So there's about 18%. We'll go ahead and hit the left one. Engine should stabilize at about 70% RPMs. While that's going on, we'll bring our IFF switch up. Turn our nav system on. Set the navigation system to operate. INU on. Set our radio switch to calm, and then set your identifier, whichever you prefer. On your CAS switches or autopilot uh, assist switches, you're going to head and turn the autopilot hold light off. We don't need it right now. Leave the other ones on. Go ahead and pull our throttle back to idle. See the engine comes down to 70%. We're going to go ahead and left click their turbo gear switch once, hit start again. Same process for the right engine, waiting for 20%. There's number two rolling. Eighteen percent, close enough. Fuel cutoff valve. While 
While that's going on, we'll come over here to the back panel, turn our laser warning uh, indicator switch on, as well as the uh, UV-26 countermeasure system. We'll uncage our standby ADI. Come up top here and set the anti-dust switch on. Set your navigation lights to whatever your preference is. Okay. With both engines now stabilized at 70%, we'll bring up our left and right generators. Shut off the APU with this button here. Come back over to your APU fuel shutoff switch and bring it down. Close your cover. Doing one last check of our systems here. Okay, everything's looking good. Now we're going to slowly increase the RPMs up to maximum. You're just going to push through the gate. All right, so the RPM is now in their maximum position. And with the RPMs up at full and the generators on, you can now bring up your helmet mounted system if you choose, and you can disable it with the switch right here in the middle. So there's on and off. Okay. We'll go ahead and do an in-place takeoff here, so I can show you guys a few things here before we wrap up. Bring up our control indicators. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to make sure that you have mapped here is T, or Tango, on your keyboard. I think we talked about this in the previous one. I can't remember, but let's go through it just in case. So the big ones for today, we're going to hit search, and we're just going to type trim. There's only two that I really want you guys to focus on. That's going to be your um, cyclic stick trim and the trimmer reset with left controls uh, trim. Okay, now with that being said, so trim in a typical aircraft, for those of you who don't know, we all know that you know you, you trim the left wing, left wing dips down, trim the right wing, right wing dips, dips down, then you know up and uh, down on the elevators. What it does in a helicopter is it trims the, all the controls to their current location. Okay, So if I push the stick forward and I hit my trim button and I let go of the stick, which I now have, notice the stick didn't move. But when I hit left control T and reset it, now we're back to our position. Okay. It's really critical to use this when flying a helicopter or you will break your wrists. By the 10 minutes of flying, you're going to wish that somebody would cut your hand off. So here's what we're going to do pushing forward here. Now, naturally, the KA-50, if I add some collective here, kids don't do this at home, you're going to see she tries to rock back, okay? So we need to compensate with some forward trim. So we're just going to add a little bit of forward trim. We're going to go ahead and apply our wheel brakes. You can do that with an access or W on your keyboard. Now I'm going to start adding a little bit of collective. Pulling back a little bit. Now she's going forward because she rolls. So we're going to pull back just a little bit, just until she settles down. Okay. And we're going to keep adding collective, pitching just slightly forward. Now we're going to add some right rudder to compensate for the centrifugal force. And we're going to push through our gate here, adding collective, compensating for the... So, notice that she always wants to go one way. If I com take completely off the rudder pedals here, she wants to turn. Okay, that's due to centrifugal force. So I'm going to compensate with the right rudder. Let me center my screen here. There we go. I'm going to hit G on our keyboard, or Golf, to bring up our landing gear. You can see the landing indicator lights are out, indicating the gear is up. Okay, now we're going to keep gaining altitude unless I pull back on the collective. So I'm going to reduce the collective a little bit. Now right now, I'm using air, all of my hand movements to correct the aircraft. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that trimmer button, so I'm going to hit T on my keyboard. And I'm going to be, comp now I am completely off the controls. Now you can see she's rocking up just a little bit, but I'm not touching the stick right now. Now if I want to stop that, what I'll do is push forward just a little bit. 
And I'm going to also add my rudder pedal to uh, compensate for the turn that she's doing. I'm going to feather it out a little bit. And I hit that trim button again, and you can see now she's really stubbly, okay? Now, I bumped the collective there, which is why she started to pitch up on me again. But you guys get the idea. So every time I hit that trimmer button, the controls will sync where, where they are. So there you go. I just let off again. Versus if I were to reset. Now, watch what happens when I reset. I'm just going to hit the left control T, so... Enjoy this one, guys, because it's going to be a lot of fun. So, left control T. Yeehaw! Okay. So, what happened there is that the control services went back to their default positions, right? So, that's why she went balls to the wall crazy right there. So, you want to be real careful when you release them that you keep a, a mental note of where your controls are, okay? Because if you don't, when you uncage that uh, trimmer, she's going to come all over the place like crazy like you guys just saw. Getting after what we're here for, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the um, HUD, as I discussed right before we take off. And the reason why I took off first is because some of the um, indications aren't there unless you're airborne. So looking up at the top of our HUD here, the top left, we have our uh, current ground speed in kilometers per hour. The plus sign will uh, be present whether you're going forward or backward motion. So either way, it, the plus sign just indicates that you're in motion. You have your heading tape with the current heading indicator right here. We have our current um, altimeter. Uh, radar altimeter. The P, if it's on your screen, uh, indicates that you are below 300 meters, so keep that in mind if you're flying it in the dark. This vertical line here coming up on the uh, on top of the uh, pitch scale indicates your uh, relationship to a perfect stationary position. This line will appear, I believe, about s bet uh, just below about 60 uh, kilometers uh, per hour. Kind of can't talk today. So at 60 kilometers per hour, this line will appear approximately, give or take. And the smaller the line gets, the closer to a hover you're getting. Okay, if the line starts falling backwards down towards the bottom of the HUD, it means that you're getting backwards motion. It also applies to bank and uh, slip index, and you'll see that uh, later on when we go over the, the uh, flight controls tutorial. Um, you have your bank scale, your pitch scale, okay, breaking up in 10 degree increments. On the left side, we have our accelerometer giving us our current G rating. You see that again over here, the plus sign obviously indicating uh, G on the aircraft, so we're starting at 1 G. And then right here on the bottom you have your vertical velocity indicator uh, showing meters per second. Okay. So 10, 20 descent of 30 meters per second, climbing all the way up, same uh, pitch scale. All right, so that pretty much covers the KA-50 for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Let me get my camera back here and get control of my aircraft before I lose it. Um, this aircraft's a lot of fun. There's a lot to learn from it. I hope you guys uh, enjoy this as we start diving into it. She, uh, I'm sort of guilty of the fact that uh, it feels like she hasn't got the attention she deserves. Um, it can do a lot. Um, the more I've read about it, I mean, this thing can even uh, drop bombs, which that one I, I, I can't really particularly see being effective with all the other aircraft that are in DCS world, why somebody would want to drop bombs with a KA-50, but she has the ability to if that is your cup of tea. So moving forward, guys, the in the next series, we'll go over navigation. Navigation in this thing is pretty intense. Um... You can, just like any of the other aircraft, you can manually edit your waypoints. Uh, she requires a bit more know-how to do so, but uh, it'll be fun times. So, as usual, guys, if you like the content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to get future notifications of content yet to come. Uh, be on the lookout for some pretty good stuff. Uh, we have, obviously, more tutorials for the KA-50. We have a review of the Fox Mount... Um, the Fox... Fox mount, HOTAS mount system, as well as the 10 centimeter extension for the Thrustmaster Warthog from Sahaj, um, as well as a couple utility videos that are coming up, some cool utilities that I've found that I, I don't think people um, give enough credit for or maybe are, are just not comfortable using because they don't understand the principle of it. So be on the lookout for some a lot of content coming your way, guys. Until next time, this is Overkill.
See you guys later.